Hi everyone! Welcome to a very cold and snowy Friday here in the craft room. I am all bundled up and all ready for today's tutorial. We are going to be making some hexagon dish scrubbies. These are double-sided, they're nice and thick, and they help scrub those dishes so your fingers don't actually go through them. Um, it's a fun little shape, it's easy to hold, and honestly, depending on the kind of cotton you use, you could even use them as sort of like a little face scrubby or something in the shower too. Just a nice little shaped scrubby. It's also a handy way to get comfortable with that double crochet three together cluster stitch. We just did a tutorial on the granny cluster hexagon. This is a mini version of that and an update on the hexagon purse that we're working on. Yes, there's a tutorial coming for that. I'm still working on the lining though. So in the meantime, I thought we would practice the hexagon shape in a sort of smaller format. This takes very little yarn. So if you've got some scrap cotton lying around, then you can whip up a handful of these, maybe in some Valentine color or some spring colors, Easter colors perhaps. It's always nice to have a handful of dishcloths or scrubbies in the make-ahead stash in case you need a little stack of something to bring with you to somebody's house if you've been invited for dinner. So without further ado, let's grab our hooks, grab our cotton yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up some scrubbies together. Our little hexagon dish scrubby is two-sided, so we are going to make two of these and then single crochet them together. You're going to need around five yards of your middle color, I'm using white, and around 12 yards of your secondary color, I'm using red today. I'm using a size 4 medium weight 100% cotton yarn. Cotton is great for dish scrubbies because it is very sturdy, it washes well, and it's heat resistant. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and a 5.5 millimeter hook also known as an I or a 9 in the US, and once you've got all that together, we can get started. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show, and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. We're going to start by making two of these. They're both identical, except for the last row, but we'll get to that. We're going to begin in the middle, so start with your middle color or white, and we're going to start with a cinch circle. You don't want to make it too small, but you don't want to make it too big. If this is tricky, you can also chain five and join with a slip stitch to the first chain to make a ring, but you want to make a ring as small as possible. We're going to chain one more. That chain two counts as a double crochet or the first part of a double crochet two together, um, or I should say part of the, a double crochet three together cluster. So we're going to chain two, count it as a part of a double crochet, and we're going to work the first half of a double crochet into that cinch circle and work the first half of a second double crochet into that cinch circle. So we're doing a double crochet, two stitches together. You should have three loops on your hook, so there's your chain two and two half worked double crochets. Yarn over, pull back through everything. And that is our first little cluster. Chain two, and now we're going to work five three double crochet together clusters into the rest of the circle. So we're going to yarn over, work the first part of a double crochet, do that twice more, you'll have four loops on your hook, there's your original working loop, and three half worked double crochets, Yarn over, pull back through all four loops, and there is a double crochet three together cluster. Chain two, and now you're going to do that four more times. You will have six clusters. They all technically count as a double crochet three stitch together cluster. Of course, remembering our first one was a chain two to start. Grab the little short tail, cinch up the circle nice and tight. Don't forget that last chain two, and you're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that first cluster. So th six, three double crochet together clusters with chain two spaces in between. You should have something that looks like that, a bit like a little flower. And then you can fasten off. That is the middle part complete. And you'll probably have some long tails, so take a moment to weave them in on the back. Next, 
Next, we're going to take our second color. We're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. You can join in any chain to space. I like to join in the same place that I fastened off. We're going to join with a slip stitch. Chain two. This first cluster is just like the first cluster of row one. We're going to work the first half of two double crochets into that same chain two space. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull back through everything, and that counts as a double crochet three together cluster. Chain two into the same space, work a double crochet three together cluster. Try not to split your yarn. Right through the space. Work the first half of one double crochet, the first half of a second double crochet, and the first half of a third double crochet. You'll have four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull back through everything. Chain one, and then move to the next chain two space. You're going to work three double crochet together cluster, chain two, three double crochet together cluster, chain one. So there's cluster number one, chain two in the middle, another three double crochet together cluster, and then chain one. So what you're doing is creating a little corner space between the two clusters and a little chain one space to give you a bit of a stretch as you move across to the next chain two space, and that also helps create a little flat side for your hexagon. All right, same thing, three double crochet together cluster, chain two, three double crochet together cluster, chain one in each of those chain two spaces all the way around. Once you've worked double crochet, three together cluster, chain two, double crochet, three together cluster, chain one all the way around, you'll have 12 clusters, six chain two corner spaces, and six chain one side spaces. Don't forget that last chain one. Join with a slip stitch to the top of the first cluster, and if this is side one, you're going to snip your yarn and fasten off, weave in your tail, and then you're going to do side two exactly the same way. When you get to the end of side two, like this, you're going to slip stitch into the next chain two corner space, chain one, and then grab side one. Make sure that your pretty side, or the right side, is facing away from you, and you're going to put your two hexagons wrong sides together. We're going to join them now with a row of single crochet. So you're going to pair up two corner spaces, put your hook through both corner spaces, and single crochet, and then do it again. So every chain two corner space pairing gets to single crochet. And then it's really easy. You've got a set of clusters, a chain one space, and a set of clusters across the side. So we're going to find the top of the cluster, there we go, single crochet, find the chain one space in between, so you don't have to worry about the stitch, just put your hook right through the chain one space, maybe tighten up on that yarn a little bit, single crochet, then it's the top of the two clusters again. So find the top of the cluster stitches. There we go. And single crochet. And then that brings you to a chain two corner space. So make sure you're getting your hook through both sides, two single crochet in the chain two corner space, and then it's a single crochet through the top of each cluster. And this gets easier the more your seam is joined a single crochet through the chain one corner space, a single crochet through the tops of the two clusters, and then that brings you to another chain two corner space, two single crochet in the corner. And you're going to do that all the way around. Easy peasy. Once you've worked a single crochet through each pairing of stitch and space, and two in the corner spaces all the way around. You're just going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet you made and fasten off. Take a moment to weave in your tail. And another thing I like to do with my little shapes 
is find the corner spaces or the corner stitches and just pull out on them. And I feel like this helps to really define that nice little hexagon shape that we're going for. So you'll have six corners, make sure you get them all. Weave that little tail in and you've got a lovely little two-sided squishy scrubby. Really cute. Don't forget to pull out the corners so you get that real accentuated hexagon shape going. I just love how squishy these are. I found when I made my first one, I kind of held it <laughs> for a while while I was sort of writing down the pattern so I would remember it. And I liked how it felt in my fingers. So I'm looking forward to using these in the sink. A quick note on cotton yarns of strong color. If you're going to use cotton strong colors like this rich purple or this rich red, I recommend washing them first before you give them away or before you even use them because sometimes, not always, but sometimes the darker colors in the cotton will run a little bit and it might make you a bit nervous if you look in the sink and you see like the water's gone purple or something. Uh, they don't all do that but some of them have. I find actually it's the blue colors that tend to run if they're going to run at all. So you might want to just give it a wash first before you use it or give it away and that will take care of it. Also a couple people have mentioned every once in a while we talk about running colors that if you toss a color stay um, article, I think there's some color stay products on the market, in the wash it will help absorb any of that dye that maybe comes out. Um, or you can just sort of do them by hand like I like to. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed today's little scrubby tutorial and we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, have a wonderful week. Bye everybody! Hi everybody! Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe!